Okay. Okay. Um, it's recording. Right, I'll begin again then. <laughs> All right. I'll, fire, fire Protection Board meeting, December 3rd, 2020, is now called to order. And, uh, we'll begin uh, first order of business on the agenda. Minutes of the previous meeting of September 10th. Everybody received a copy and uh, reviewed those. I'll entertain a motion. I make a motion. Approve Motion yeah. to accept, Tony? Yes. Correct. Motion to Tony, was that a motion to accept? A motion to accept. Okay, is there a second? Second. Kevin, Kevin Wibichowski, I'll second that. Okay. Any discussion? Uh, all in favor of accepting the minutes, signify by saying aye. 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 We have uh, Kevin Griffith. Yes. Okay. Any opposed? All right. Minutes of uh, September 10th have been approved. Comments and concerns of persons present today? Do we have any? Uh, There's somebody, we have a somebody calling in in the number that's 203-627-0226. Uh, and they should be able to speak. I'm just letting you know in case you wanted to have them introduce themselves if they did have a comment. But um, they're not responding back. So I'm not sure if we want to check back with that person. Well, we have another section for comments and concerns yeah. at the um, end of the meeting. So. OK. So hearing none, we'll move on to uh, DCP investigation report. Uh, Karen? Yeah. Yep. Can I just, that number 6270226 is Bob Hollis. Oh, it is. Okay. So he's, yes. he should be able to speak. Let me move him over to, all right. His yeah. phone looks like it might be on mute. He's on mute right now. He's online. Right, right. He's on Let mute. me see if I can. What I'd like to do is move him over to a panelist, but I'm not sure if I can do that because he's just calling in. <laughs> See, I don't, I don't think I can. Um, can you hear us, Bob? Yes, he's not muted on my end, but he's muted on his end. So. Not quite sure what to do. Yeah, me neither. I'm trying to figure it out myself. <laughs> you know, because I'm, I'm usually there's a little screen, even on a, on a cell phone, there's a little screen that, that you can hit to, to mute and unmute if you can hear us. I don't know if you can or not. Yeah, it keeps, dro it keeps dropping off. Unless that's you moving over. Oh, he's, he's joining now, I think. Yeah, I think so. There yeah. he is. I see him. He's contacting audio now. Okay, I'll mute now. Can you hear us, Bob? Should be able to hear us. There he is. Hey, hey. Good morning. Bob, can you hear us? You may have to turn his volume up on the computer itself. He's getting technical assistance. I can see that. <laughs> I 
He should be able to see us and hear us. I think. You going to text him? Tony. Oh. Hey, Karen. Yes. You have a uh, attendee. That's, I think that's Bob's telephone number. Maybe he's trying to use his phone for the voice. Right. That's and that's what I did before. And he he can talk. Um, he's not responding. Oh, he there, looks like there he's isn't muted. anything I can do on my end. I'm, I don't have him muted. He's he can talk. He's got to unmute his end, apparently. Right. Yeah. Yeah. disappeared again from what I can see. Yeah, he's, now he's just in on his phone. Yeah. Okay. Which he's not responding to that. So Tony might be talking to him. Yeah. He said he's going to back out and then try to come back in. He was having some issues. Um, This is starting to remind me of yesterday's meeting, Karen. <laughs> Better get your lunch ready. <laughs> Please don't say that. <laughs> One started two hours earlier. <laughs> I can't. I have an East Shore, a meeting with East Shore Health at, at 11. I will be okay in a few minutes. He's connecting, hopefully. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. You got it. Welcome aboard. Thank you. Sorry for the delay here. It's technical brain brain dish issues. My wife had to get me straightened out. You're on that Eastern, Eastern time zone. You got to get back on the, on the regular time zone with us. I'm in a, I'm on the shoreline time zone. Can they see you? Can you see me? No, we don't have to see you though. We can hear you. That's the important thing. We can see your name and we can hear you. I can see Tony right now. Yeah. Well, because I have my video on. Oh. It's just a matter of turning video on and off. Like this. See? Oh, well. Okay, well, whatever. All right. Let's uh I look like it is what it is. Moving right along. We're up to DCP investigation report 
status report. I saw Director Brown, uh, the name on the screen. I don't know if she's still with us or. I am still here. Good morning, okay. Good Chairman morning. Waskowitz and members of the board. Pamela Brown, Director of Investigations. Uh, if you have our report in front of you, you will see that there are three cases that are open under the remain open cases. Those are site inspections. We did find uh, some violations, so we're, we're working on those. Other than that, we have nothing more to report. Those cases are open and you'll see them either through the next board report or uh, perhaps a, a hearing or compliance meeting. Okay. Thank you. Thank I have you. No questions. I have no questions. Uh, anybody? No. Thank you for your time, Director. Uh, appreciate the, the report. Thank you. Take care. Stay healthy. You as well. Thank you. Old business. Item one is a backflow prevention device. We had that discussion. Few months back, uh, there was a uh, email. The email was sent on September 11th to Leslie O'Brien. Everybody received a copy of that. Anybody have any discussion on that? Richard, would you like to comment on that? Uh, no, I believe everybody has a copy of what was sent. That was the board's request. Well, basically, you're recommending a regulation or statute change to this, correct? Uh, I'll have to read it again. I think it's statutory change. Well, then I suggest we move forward with, with that. I concur. I mean, this is, this is something that definitely needs to get corrected. It's, I mean, it prob probably hasn't been an issue, but it certainly is a, call it a technical error. We didn't get a response back yet from Leslie. Did we, Karen, on that? Um, no, I was going to say, I sent her um, an email and let her know that the board wanted to speak with her. <coughs> she did get an invite, um, and I believe she responded back tentatively attending. Um, but that's, I don't know anything more than that. So. So maybe we should send it, send this document to her again. You could send it up. Maybe the board could vote to have this document sent to her again and ask for a written response. I'll entertain a motion. This document be resent to Leslie O'Brien. Somebody want to make that motion? I'll make that motion. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion. All I'd like to say is yes, it is this something that it definitely has to get taken care of. It hasn't appeared to be an issue, but it is, is something the house it needs some housekeeping uh, to address it. So. Now that it's been brought out, now that it's kind of bowed in the public, I hope that the you know, like Dave says, it hasn't been an issue in the past, but now now that it's been surfaced to the top of the table, let's hope that nobody you know, tries to enforce this. Well, you know, I think I think it's a situation where you still have a licensee doing the work. So I don't think the department would take some type of punitive yeah. damn. You know, we don't have an incompetent person doing it. We're saying that the statute needs to be changed so that either or can install it depending on where the job's at and when it's who's starting first you know so well i'm just thinking that you know all of a sudden plumbers realize that they're the only ones that can do these things so they could be the you know decide that you know that, that they want to take advantage of this glitch i can't believe they would do that <laughs> <laughs> well i can't either uh, as he says it with his tongue in his cheek all right and obviously the conversation we have about this thing, I think would be enough defense, uh, enough, enough you know, information to, to, to defend a, a fire protection guy for doing this. Right, right. 
All right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passed. So this will be reset to uh, Leslie O'Brien and uh, hopefully we get some action and results here because uh, we're moving into the, I'm assuming the legislative session will happen next year, so. All right. Were the other two people, were the other two people opposed? Karen can have it for the record or? I just don't think they weighed in. Nobody, nobody opposed, Richard. That's so it's unanimous. Just to send that back to Leslie. Yeah. We may have lost Kevin and Kevin. I don't know. No, they're still on, or they should be. Kevin and Kevin, you want to weigh in? Yeah, I'm here. You want to vote on this last yeah. issue? Sure. I, yay, whatever. <laughs> Resend it. And the chairman, chairman votes in the affirmative also, so it is unanimous. So. All right. New business. Application review working group. Update to be provided by the designated board member, which would be me. And uh, quite an extensive report here. Uh, there was three uh, license reviews. Uh, one on the 13th of October, James Kirchuk Jr. He applied for an F1. He submitted two letters that were not notarized. He does not have an F2. Uh, he did have a Penn State completion certificate. He did not provide an apprentice, apprentice completion certificate. As I was the attendee, I recommended to deny and uh, kind of was overruled by the DOL and uh, Director Herbert because they felt that uh, he had the qualifications for an F2, even with, you know, he. The DOL had stated he wouldn't have got the letter from Penn State if he didn't do the uh, apprenticeship, but I, I, I was looking for documentation. So that was the uh, one application that was reviewed on the 13th. Any uh, questions? All right, hearing none, I'll move on. There was a, another one. Another session held in the 9th of uh, November. Four plumbers had applied for the new F5 category contractor's license. Peter Kissiel, Alan Werner, Jr., I believe, Jr., uh, James Gamble, and Charles Appleby Sr. All had the NFSA uh, completion certificate of. Uh, training for the uh, limited fire protection. Again, that was uh, held by the NFSA. They did not submit the manufacturer's certificates of training for the installation of the very, what at least one type of pipe. They were denied as uh, being an incomplete application. And also on that session, there was a Jack LaRoche. He applied for an F2. He had a US Department of Labor Certificate of Apprenticeship Completion, dated 3 04 he, he holds a Massachusetts sprinkler license and he was approved. Um, as I was uh, referring earlier to Karen about yesterday's meeting, there was a session, third session since we last met, 1st of December and uh, from that meeting, I had made a suggestion that uh, the state address the way they uh, handle the uh, license reviews. I sat on the sidelines for an hour and a half while I listened to the, the heating board. So we got to uh, the fire board. So yesterday there was a Michael Rosum. He applied for an F6. He had completed the NFSA course. He provided no manufacturer's certificates for installation. Therefore it was deemed an incomplete application. Randall Harrington, he applied for an F6. 
He also completed the NFSA course, provided no, ma no uh, manufacturer certificates of installation, therefore another incomplete application. Third application yesterday was Antonio Verderami, applied for an F5. He uh, had completed the NFSA course. Again, he provided no manufacturer certificates, incomplete application. Fourth application was Kenneth Shamblin, F2. Uh, on the application, this was a questionable application. The application was modified from F1 to F2. Uh, it was deemed by the department that it was possible. PSI may have done this based on the fact that they only submitted a, a he only submitted a $90 fee. Um, but he needs to provide documentation. His application was denied. The uh, fifth, sixth, and seventh application yesterday, there were reviews. It was Peter Kissiel applied for his F5. He was previously considered. He did provide an Upanor certificate of installation from the manufacturer. His application was approved. Charles Appleby Sr., F5, again, previously considered. He provided an Upanor certificate from the manufacturer and uh, his application was approved. Alan Werner Jr. applying for an F5, previously considered. And uh, he provided an Upanor certificate training and his application was approved. Uh, I, I probably should have paused and asked if anybody had any questions after each one, but does anybody have any questions? Not here. Say again? I said not here. Oh, okay. Kevin, can you, are you able to speak? Kevin with Chelsea? Just, he was, he was chatting saying he's not sure if his um, sound is working. Okay. So I wanted to see if he could respond back. So the, the, uh, the, the road to getting these F5 and F6 licenses, just so that, you know, we're all clear on what it is, is they have to take uh, this NSFA uh, course, obviously, and pass it. And then part of the part of this is to have uh, um, a product review or whatever with you, Upanor. Well, what any 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 of the manufacturers uh, and and with this with the review that was going on yesterday because it's so new, I I made a request to um, department to have Dave Lafon with NFSA, you know, observe and you know maybe interject or have any you know, comments or whatever, and it was. It was overruled. I don't know. They, the, the, the explanation given was that there was. Uh, I'm trying to think of a word, but uh, you know, you know, the personal information and criminal records. But uh, you know, everybody realizes we haven't seen any personal, like social security numbers, because they they did use that as an example. The applications no longer contain social security numbers, and they no longer contain the. Uh, you know, criminal criminal records, or have you been convicted of a felony? So, um, but anyways, it, you know, because I thought they would uh, be able to answer any of the questions as far as whether this training was sufficient or whatnot. So, so uh, like the F, like all the rest of the licenses, F licenses, there's an exam required to to get this license. Is that true of the F five and F six? Yes. Did, Bob, Bob, didn't you come to the workshop to develop the exam questions? Okay. Did you? Um, I, I don't know. No, I guess I didn't. I even... Okay. I know Dave was there. And yeah, I was there. Tony, were you there? To come up with the residential sprinkler questions? Yeah, okay. yeah I'm not, I just want to make sure that I'm just trying to get clear in my mind exactly what the requirements are here i'm not yeah i just sent everybody a pdf 
which includes the application, the exam process, content areas of what are on the exam, the number of questions, and the reference books. So I just sent that PDF yeah. to all board members. Is it is it clear that the applicants have to submit proof of uh, installer certification? Yes, it's on the application now. Because that seemed to be the biggest hang up on those applications that uh, because, they read this morning. Yes, because the application was created before they started giving the course. And before they started giving the course, they had anticipated having the manufacturer, the pipe manufacturers be part of the course curriculum and be involved with it. Because we, we had uh, done this prior to COVID and they were, it was going to be included in live instruction. Then mm -hmm. when they went online and we had COVID, the pipe manufacturers backed out saying, we can't send people there. We're not going to get involved or whatever. They can get our pipe cert by just going online or taking our courses, going through them directly. So the application just didn't have that line item in it because it was supposed to be all inclusive on the original course. Now the application has been updated a month ago and, and you'll, you'll see on what I just sent you. Yeah, I think it's item number three. Yes, I believe so. And do we know what that is at all? Is it something that's legit? What's that, Bob? This this requirement of the manufacturers. What do we do? We know what that is. I mean, is that call up the manufacturers and in fifteen minutes? You no, know, they get, have to online course. They have to take. So it'll be from Upanor or Vega or it has to be for sprinkler fit and PEX, PEX or uh, what is it, CP? Oh, I think yeah. I those the application says CPVC and PEX. Right, yeah. So it has to be from a manufacturer that, that has a course for residential, you know, for residential sprinkler to use that type of material. Can I just interrupt for a minute? Um, David, I just want you to know, um, there is somebody in the attendee area, and I'm. It may be David Lafond. I'm not sure. Let me know at any point if you want me to check in with this caller to see who it might be, because I don't no, know. It's who not, it is. I, Karen. I know it's not him because he okay. he texted me. He got tied up, and uh, right. he said I'll touch base later. Okay. So I know it's not okay. Dave Lafond. Okay. I, I didn't want to wait too long. Let you can, send, you can let me know when you want me to check in with the person that's. Is that the 8028, Karen? Yeah. Yeah. Did, oh. Yeah, I just, I just didn't, I didn't want to, I just wanted to make sure because you were on this topic in case it was David. Did you want me to wait till the comments and concerns part of, of the meeting or? Maybe they could chat or something and let us know if they have any questions. The, uh, the pre, prerequisite, what is the prerequisite for getting one of these licenses? You have to be a P1 or a P2? Yes. Or, an, okay. So we got two licenses here. We have a journeyman's license and we have a contractor's license. What, what is the, if you, 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 go, you go for a journeyman first and then a contractor or? Yes, you would. If you, if you happen to end up with the F6 license and you work two years or more, you could apply to take the F5. But you'd, well, have to have, but you'd have to have the P1 license too at that time. Okay, all right, that's what I was kind of- Because it's a combination system. A P2 cannot apply for a F5 without no. two yeah. years experience. No. Without two years of experience and having a P1 at that time. Okay, I, okay. I'd like, I'd like to interject, like I wasn't aware that a P1 could apply automatically for the F5. He, he bypassed the F6 automatically. I didn't- I, didn't realize it was set up that way. And I don't know if anybody else was other than maybe the department. Well, it would kind of makes sense because if, you, if you're supposed to work underneath the hot bill contractor license, then you couldn't, there'd be no path to do that. So. I think it's item number five in the document that Richard sent. I, I don't mean to, uh, to you know, uh, talk about this, I, I just, kind of, it's been such a long time in coming to this point that kind of forgotten a little bit of a few of the details. So I apologize for that. No, that's fine. I, I have a question not to um, change the subject from where, where Bob is, is 
talking about. Um, there may be an a issue with the documents that are allowed to be brought into the test. Um, can we, can somebody check or can we check with Dave to find out if NFPA 13 is allowed to be brought into the test as test material? Because well, I'm- the test, the, test, the test was developed by subject matter experts, which were board members that were invited and the guy that created the NFSA course, et cetera. So it wouldn't be Dave LaFon. He's not involved with the examination. Okay. The examination is conducted by PSI and it's a state examination. So who do we find out? How do we find out what reference materials are allowed in the test? It's in that PDF that I just sent. Okay. So I might just have to scroll down a little further. Yes. Dave LaFond is here. If any, just letting you guys know if you, if you did want him to speak, he is here. So up to you guys when, if you want to let him into the meeting or when you want me to do that. We did weigh in, Karen. There are actually, four other attendees, I, I see. Well, we it's have fun. David LaFond and then we have um, Alan DeMeda and Howard from, from DCP. Mm -hmm. They're just observing. Right. So, um, and there's a phone call. And a phone call. Um, yeah. So, so again, um, uh, David Lafon just came on, and I, you can let me know when you, when you want me to move him over to the status that he can speak. Um, leave it up to you guys. Oh, does anybody yeah. have any questions for Dave? We could, add, you know, bring him into. Yeah, I, I'm looking down through, trying to do, keep up with you guys. Um, unless I'm looking at this improperly, uh, and Richard, maybe you can follow with me uh, on page ten. Yes, of the yep. right, so it says the following reference materials are allowed in the examination center. Correct. And it's BA 13D and then the IRC for one and two families. Correct. It's, it sounds like they're, um, it, I don't know, it, I don't want to call it a mistake, but it, it might be a little blip or a glitch. Um, I'm getting word that some of the, or one of the questions or a couple of the questions that are asked um, are referenced by NFPA 13D to go to NFPA 13. And well, 13 I mean, people need to, in the yeah. Right, well, people need to email us so we can track, go find that question, and then we can okay. to do. So, so who could, well, you get the email at the at, yeah at the end okay. of the examination. There's yeah. always, there's, you get all kinds of options to, if you have want to challenge a question or you feel something's wrong, you could do it uh, while you're on the computer taking the test or anybody can email us directly and then we'll have the test developer try to find that question. You know, if the person remembers a few words out of the questions, we could probably target that question in the database and then we can see if there's a collection. You know, or, yeah, and it, it has to... It has to do with the, the uh, sprinkler head um, temperatures. Right, but this, okay, yeah. well, I mean, I wish somebody, if you can remember what this person told you or whatever and email me, then I can try to track it down. Okay, I can I can email you and just get the yeah. get the gist of the conversation that was uh, happened and we can go from there, I guess. Right. My, my, question, my question is who took the test without being approved? I have no clue. No one's taking it yet. Well, Kevin's just telling somebody took the test. Oh, that you know what you're talking about? Oh, I know what this person's talking about, but Chuck Appleby said the same thing about some problems with the test. That was the NFSA test. When they went to take that test, they thought certain things um, were referenced different ways or, they did, or the questions they thought maybe you need another book or whatever. That's the test out of the class. That's a class test. Oh, that's the, oh, okay. So it's before the and there was something. There was something in there that Chuck Appleby brought up and I said, well, then get a hold of NFSA and, and, and discuss it with them. So. Okay, so that, that wasn't in this, in this licensing test. It was in the, the course test. Right, the licensing nope. test hasn't been administered yet, although it may be in a few days now that we've approved people. Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense then, okay. Yeah, so maybe Dave LaFon can explain if anybody had any, comments or concerns about the class that class they took and the exam at the end. Okay. Okay. That's not our issue then. 
Yeah. Yeah. It sounds like most of the people that are getting ready to take that that have been approved for the test are all P1s at this point. Correct. So part of the part of the uh, the test for for a contractor is business law. Well, that part will be waived because they already took a business and law exam. But that won't be when somebody when a P5 goes or a six goes to take the P5 test, it will be part of that. Right. Well, what what happened is it's whatever exam they take first. So if they if they apply for their P1 and get approved, and they happen to apply for their F5 and get approved, and they take the F5 two part exam first, which is trade knowledge and business and law, then when they go to take the P1 exam, they'll have to the, the, will waive the business and law portion. Really, they'll have to take their P1 first, but then uh, that's yeah. way they can apply for the F5. Okay. That's now, is the state, does the State Department of Consumer, no, the State of Connecticut Department of Consumer Protection consider the business law test, exam, whatever you want to call it, valid for forever? So, I mean, if somebody took the business law 20, 25 yeah. years ago, they don't have to ever take it again. Not normally. Usually, usually we can't oh. find, if it's over two years, you know, some people take it again, but. It's still the same exam for every single occupation. Is it is it a test that's updated on an annual on some kind of basis? Yeah, we do end up having uh, workshops where we review the business and law examination. That's that goes to my question. Why why do you why does the department arbitrarily waive the uh, business law? Like I said, if the person took the business law 20, 25 years ago, things laws. Well, it wouldn't be that long ago. It was nineteen ninety five. And, uh, you know, if we don't have the exam results for some reason or another, then they take it, that's all. Yeah. No so difference I mean, anybody else, Dave, that has a license. You know, I took my license 30, 40 years ago. So I, I maintain an F1 license based on the old business law test. I mean, it'd be the right. same thing. At right. one time, this came up back in... Uh, came up back in 91 or 90, um, where the electrical board was getting ticked off because every contractor that came in said, oh, I didn't know I had to do that. Oh, I didn't know I couldn't give them a 1099. I didn't know I couldn't give the first, I had to get them registered right away and all this other stuff. So then by 95, we said, that's it. We're gonna give a business and law portion. So when they come in and argue, argue we could say, well, you took a business and law portion exam. so." You're, you're definitely guilty because you should have known, you know, because some of the questions are on licensing, aside from other laws, which is in this bulletin I sent you, the content area of a business and law exam. It's actually on page uh, nine. So now that now that this these licenses exist and there is activity of people applying for them and so forth, how do we notify authorities have in jurisdiction that these things exist and what they and what they are. I mean, I know of one fire marshal that knows about it and that's Kevin Griffith. But I'm not sure the rest of the state will know anything about this. Will DCP notify them? Well, we normally don't, but you know. Shouldn't they? Shouldn't somehow or another? I mean, when somebody goes in to pull a permit to do one of these and they show this limited F6 license, I would think they would kind of question what the hell it is. Well, maybe the state fire marshal's office maybe want, might want to do a, a update letter in conjunction with DCP through our communication people. That, that's what I was going to say, suggest that it's done through the state fire marshal. I can, I can mention it to Bill. Like I mentioned to Bill Abbott, but basically we stay clear of licensing issues. Um, if it's just an information setting or informational issue, maybe something that can be set through the Odom website. Yeah, that's right. Just to let them know that they're the new, uh, you know, uh, license holders not wouldn't be getting involved with the uh, day to day operation of it. It's just letting them yeah. know, fire marshals know that they're. I mean, if you have, if you have, uh, if I used to be able to get the building official list of building officials, but I mean, if there's a state fire marshal 
Well, I guess the building official too would have to have it. Who would these get inspected by the building official, or would the fire marshal have to be involved? I think it's going to be more with the fire uh, building official because single okay. families are exempt from the fire code. So basically, exactly. code. You know, and, and quite often it's 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 plumbing inspectors that inspect this stuff, not yes. necessarily. Fire marshals kind of review the plans, Mike, but usually it's the plumbing inspector that actually does site reviews. Right. Exactly. Right. So, I mean, we could easily do, a, you know, we could easily send actually the whole exam bulletin and everything to each building official email address that uh, DES has on file. I think that's got to, I think that's a, has to happen. I mean, you got to, notify the building departments of, of something like this. Yep. If I was a plumbing inspector and I've been used to looking at, you know, F1 and F2s or P1s and P2s and all of a sudden these strange numbers pop up, I'd want to know why. Yeah. I'm not sure if we already did this, but I don't think we did. So maybe, um, Maybe we could get a list from the state building officials office. Is that still on the website, you know, Kevin? I think it is, but if you work with Odom, they can do a mass, like a, a mass email and it goes to all fire marshals and all building officials in their record. Can you forward this PDF I sent you to, to them and ask them if they could just send it out to everybody or? Well, I'd, have, I'd have to have a conversation with, with uh, Bill. Okay. Uh, we just can't send it out blindly and say, you know, because they're going to say, what, what is this? So right, there has right. to be a little introduction. There's well, got to be, there's got, there's got to be a description of what this is. Now, I mean, it's, right. it can't right. be just something that all of a sudden there's new licenses. It's got to describe specifically what it is. What is Combination it? Right. sprinkler systems, right? Plumbing right. sprinkler right. systems. Well, if we can, right. if you can let me know if we can get the list and I can talk to, um, our communication person that we need to do some sort of press release. If I yeah, can, if I can you might have to me. talk to Darren Hobbs or Joe Cassidy, you know. Okay, I'll, I'll get a hold of them. If I, yeah, I, think, I, I think this is an important thing because, you know, we this is something that we've always been critical of as the overlap of these licenses. And we don't want, you know, somebody to misunderstand that, you know, just because you got a plumbing license, you can do these combination systems. Dave, can I can I interject here? Well, only because you raised your hand. Thank you, Bob. <laughs> I didn't hear from Dave yet, though. All right, Tony. I'm <laughs> okay. All right, Rich. I think, as Kevin was saying, if we go through Odom, they could actually put a, make a seminar or a, a training uh, session for building officials and fire marshals to discuss and go over this new license available. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, let me see. I mean talk to our people in the department two communication person so that'd be good anything, Maybe. Further, anything further on this subject it sounds like this thing's moving along pretty well i mean there's obviously been a few glitches but i think uh nfsa should be uh uh thanked and 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 so forth for you know, the, obviously the work that they've put into this and, and I think it's uh, working out okay. Pretty good. I believe, Thank they, you have another, I believe they have, I don't know if Dave LaFond is still here or if he could weigh in, but I, I believe there's another batch of applications for the class. So uh, Karen, I don't know if you can allow him in or the comment. He's not, he's not on anymore. Oh. We lost him. Yeah. Um, I'll keep an eye out if you, you know, if you're going to move forward. To I, no, no, I just thought, I thought he might, I saw, I, I saw his picture pop up briefly on the screen and all right. All right, moving on. Correspondence. I saw no other correspondence other than what was reported on. And uh, brings us to the last item, comments or concerns of persons present today. Did uh, anybody chat in, weigh in or? There, um, as I said, you want me to check on the number here, the 203-410-8028? Yeah, I would check with any of the attendees, the okay. three attendees. Okay. Um, all right. So 
they should be able to talk on um, the person. Allow to talk. Person that did call in. Um, can you hear us? They're, they're not muted on our end. Any comments and concerns? Any person that's listening have comments or concerns today? I'd like to be. Uh... I'd like to be on the beach that Karen's on. That's where I want to be. Uh, comments or concerns, persons present today. Comments and concerns, persons present today. Saying it three times, hearing none, we'll move on. So on the agenda, you saw the schedule for the 2021. Uh, I'm, um, uh, I'm assuming everything will be <laughs> virtual again. Still, Karen, uh, Richard, or... Yeah, we're not going to, we're not going to, uh, it'll probably be another six months. Okay. All right. So. Kind of, are we working towards just being the norm forever? Probably. In my uh, limited opinion, I would say yes. But I don't know. I don't have the insight to the department, but I would say that seems to be the way to the country and the world is going. So with that, with that I wish everyone a uh, Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Stay safe, stay healthy. Avoid, uh, <laughs> hope you, hopefully everybody avoids uh, getting sick and getting this bad disease. And I wish everyone well. It's been a you know, wonderful, you know, I don't say a wonderful year, but it's been, been a good year dealing you know, with this board and under the circumstances. So, look forward to next year. Let's hope next year is better. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank Merry you. Christmas. Merry Bye. Christmas. Happy New Year. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. second. All, in fa all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Merry aye. Christmas. We need to adjourn. Holidays, everything, and stay well. Nine forty-seven. Take care. Okay. Bye, Karen. Bye.